once you understand, you know, or the piece of content you want to create, you can repurpose that one thing that you have so many different ways. So you don't need to constantly create content. You just need, need to create good pieces of content and repurpose those all different ways to all the different channels. Welcome to the Agents of Change podcast, the podcast for today's digital marketer with your host, Rich Brooks, and the Agents of Change, Search, Social, and Mobile. Howdy and welcome to another episode of the Agents of Change podcast, episode 252, powered by Flight New Media. So if you listen to last week's podcast, you know that I struggled to get Alexa to play my podcast. And by struggled, I mean failed miserably. Which is weird because my girlfriend has Alexa at her place, and whenever I ask, uh, ask Alexa there to play my podcast, Alexa doesn't seem to have a problem. This week, we're going to try with Google Assistant. Okay, Google, play the Agents of Change podcast. Okay, the Agents of Change, CO, social media, and mobile marketing for small business. I'll pick up where you left off. A product or a business that solves problems, you can just create a simple, uh, you know, one minute video or a two minute video and you can get it in front of your exact audience um, and you can track that whole, that whole sales process. Search social. Okay, Google pause. Okay, Google. I find it interesting that you pronounce SEO as CO. I would think that you, Google, would know a lot about SEO. What can you tell us about SEO? Sorry, I'm not sure how to help with that yet. Agents of change. Welcome okay, to Google, pause. Podcast. Okay, Google, can you tell me about SEO? Sorry, I can't help with that yet. Remind me not to book Google Assistant on our next episode about SEO. So, are you geographically challenged? In other words, do you serve a local audience? Or perhaps you run a business in a tourist destination? Then you're a local business. And you have unique marketing needs. This week, we chat with Doreen Morin Van Dam about how local businesses can can succeed online and off. Before we get to that, if you haven't grabbed your ticket to this year's Agents of Change conference, what are you waiting for? The price to go up? Again? With a full day of amazing speakers and presenters on Thursday, September 20th, and a bonus day of amazing workshops on Friday, September 21st, this is the event to level up your digital marketing skills. The last couple of episodes, I've talked about some of our speakers and topics for our conference, so I just wanted right now to highlight our Friday workshops. These are optional, so you can choose to get tickets to just the conference, but I'll highly recommend these three-hour workshops taught by industry insiders if you're serious about growing your knowledge base. We've got two, two, a morning session and an afternoon session. They both last three hours, and you have your choices. So in the morning, you can either choose live video by Joel Com, led by Joel Com, or you can choose Instagram, led by Jen Herman. And again, these are going to be very in-depth, hands-on. You know, if, if live video is your area of interest or Instagram is important to you growing your brand and your business, you definitely want to attend these. Uh, so, and then we'll take a lunch break. And then after lunch, we'll come back, and in one room, we're going to have a really in-depth, advanced Facebook ads workshop uh, led by our own Amanda O'Brien. Or you can choose to do Pinterest with Jennifer Priest, and we're going to go really into depth on Pinterest, all the different things you need to know. So if any of these topics are things you really need a deeper dive on, you definitely want to go to the Friday workshop. Again, these are each three hours long. Uh, The class size is very limited. It's very hands-on. Each one of these workshops will be $199. We're not recording them. Okay, so this is not going to be part of any any uh, virtual pass. If you want to attend, you have to be there in person, and uh, there's not any recording, so you have to be there. It's going to be pretty amazing, and again, this is a great way to add on to your Agents of Change experience. So if you're thinking about coming, but you're like, oh, I don't know about a one-day conference, if it's worth all that travel, this is perfect, because you can come Thursday to the conference, Friday to the workshops, and then you get a whole weekend in Maine, if you want to stay, uh, which is during the most perfect time of year, which is September. So it's going to be awesome. Plus, we'll get to hang out, so it'll be great. Well, that's it for now. 
Right now, let's learn more about marketing our local businesses with Doreen. She is a social media consultant and keynote speaker. Over the past seven plus years, she has helped many, many local and global entrepreneurs create and execute social media strategic plans. She loves the camera and has helped many entrepreneurs get past their fear of the camera. You'll recognize her online and on stage by her signature orange glasses, a nod to her Dutch heritage. Besides raising four kids and three dogs with her husband, she loves to cook and bake all things plant-based. I'd like to welcome to the show, Doreen Morin Van Dam. <laughs> Hi, Rich. Thanks for having me on. Pleasure to have you here. So how did you actually get started helping local and global entrepreneurs market their products and services? Well, that's actually pretty interesting. Um, those four kids ended up growing. And so when my youngest started kindergarten, I was um, looking for something new to do. I had been a stay-at-home mom for 11 years. Um, at that time when that happened, um, my husband was kind of uh, you know, exploring marketing his business in a new way. And he said, you need to check into this social media thing. Can you check out Twitter for me? And I was very reluctant, um, but I did. I checked out Twitter, and then I actually made a Twitter account, and then I went to Facebook. And at some point, people started asking me um, because I was on all these committees. You know, I was on the PTO and the PTA, and you know, I had kids in different schools, and I was volunteering everywhere. And they're like, "Well, you seem to know." So I started volunteering my time doing social media, and then one day, my husband looked at me and said, "I bet you can make money." So I bought, I purchased an online course. Um, and went through the course and then made a LinkedIn profile. And that was the beginning of it. I just started doing it and, um, very different style. I think than my husband, who's been in business for 20 something years would have done it, but I did it my way. And, um, I love teaching and training and that's really how I got started. I went out in the community, um, started networking, told people that, you know, I can help them set up social media. I can train them on how to do things, how to use tools and did some lunch and learns. And that's how I got my clients and, um, you know, really started out locally. I'm now doing a lot of remote work and community management and, you know, consulting and speaking. But I started out really helping local location based businesses in the Myrtle Beach area uh, in South Carolina, where I live. Very cool. So, so much of social media these days and digital marketing as well seems to be focused on pay to play, basically advertising on these different platforms. A lot of small businesses, however, fear spending money on advertising online or off. Can a local business actually find digital marketing success without spending money on ads? Yes, they can. And I have clients that are successful without spending a dime on advertising. They are spending money on hiring a freelancer, but they um, are creating original content and I'm helping them distribute that and they have success. They have measurable uh, analytics that, you know, they can go to Google Analytics and see website traffic is up and phone calls are coming in through Google and yes, we can measure things and yes, they have success. All right. So this is interesting because definitely it seems like there has been the shift to paid attention. Uh, not pay attention, but paid attention when it comes to digital marketing. So I'm very curious to know how people are doing this organically. And before you came on the show, I was thinking about, you know, what is a local business? And that means different things to different people. But for me, I'm thinking like, it could be an independent store, bookstore, record store, whatever it may be, restaurant. It could be a small local chain of stores, or it could be like a service area business, like propane delivery or locksmith, where somebody comes to the client's business, uh, client's office or something like that. So if these are the different types of, of local businesses, how would you begin to market these people if you didn't have money to spend on advertising? Um, well, if I were to meet with a local business like that, I would, um, I have a little intake process that takes about 90 minutes and I'm going to ask very specific questions about their business because I need to get into the head of them, um, trying to figure out who their avatar is, who their perfect target market is before I can even come up with a plan, but it all revolves around owned content. Um, whatever the plan comes out to be, whatever we decide together, whether they need to, you know, create videos or, or start a blog or, um, you know, do Facebook lives. It's all about the, the beef of it is going to be, you have to be willing 
and able to create content and I can work with you, but you as a business owner are in your business every day. And so I can tell you what videos to create. I can ask you for pictures before and after, but you have to be willing to use your smartphone and feed me the pieces of content that I need to help distribute it to the different platforms. So right. that's really how we start. So you mentioned a phrase, owned media. What do you, yeah. How would you define owned media to people listening? Um, media um, content that you create yourself. So it would be a video, it would be um, uh, pictures, it would be graphics, it would be written content, but that's yours that is branded for your business. All right. So if I'm one of these local businesses and, you know, maybe it's I own a gluten-free bakery or maybe it's that I'm this propane dealer. If, I, if I'm a gluten-free bakery, you know, some of the things that I might be creating would be what? What might be some suggestions for, that you would have? Um, sure. I would um, maybe do a video series um, on the process of uh, how this bakery got started. You know, why are you a gluten-free bakery? Why don't you do an explainer video or a story video on why are you not a regular bakery? Why are you not a cupcake bakery? What made you be that kind of bakery? And get the business owner involved. Then you could do a series on employees. You know, what does the person in the front of the bakery do all day? Are they just waiting for clients or are they taking orders? You know, what are they doing? Um, how about the, the process? Maybe the baker gets up at 5 a.m. Do a video at 5 a.m. You'd be surprised how many people are up at 5 a.m. that would watch a live video. You know, when you come in and turn on the lights and warm up the ovens and, you know, you could actually have an audience early on in the morning and just say, you know, come in in a couple of hours and we, you know, we've got the bread ready, but this is how it starts every day. Sharing behind the scenes and the process of what goes into it. And then of course the other end, you know, the happy customers eating the bread, you know, experiencing the different flavors when you have a new product. Um, you, when your suppliers come in, you can do videos, you can do um, interviews, you know, who, who supplies the, you know, who, who, who delivers those pieces that you need to create this bread. Maybe the supplier for, you know, maybe you wrap the bread up in, in a beautiful, special way, or you have special bows or special boxes. You know, how did you decide on that? What about the branding to it? You know, what is the meaning of your logo? There's so many different things. And when people hear those stories, they feel connected to you because that humanizes your brand. All right. So the owned media, whether it's video like the examples you gave us, or it could be a blog or a podcast, this is media that we control that we're creating ourselves or perhaps is being created on our behalf if we happen to be working with a video marketing team or a copywriter or whatever it may be, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. And now where are we now, if we're doing video, I'm guessing that we're putting it up to YouTube. If we're doing a blog, I'm guessing we're putting it up to our blog. If we're doing a podcast, we're putting it out to all those, um, to all those podcast channels, as well as perhaps we've got a show notes, which is basically a blog. Are there any other ideas that we need to, it, it sounds like places we need to put our content in places that are discoverable. Is that a good way of describing it? That is a really good way to describe it. And, and the other part of piece of the puzzle is it's not the quantity of the content that you make, but it's the quality because a good, you know, five to 10 minute video explaining something can be repurposed and reused so many different ways. So you get this video, you post it on YouTube, you then also upload it natively to Facebook. You then can embed it in your blog post. You can write it out in your blog post. You can create a podcast about the video. You can cut the video into little segments and make either Instagram stories, or you can do an Instagram live about the video. You, there's so many different ways you can get quotes from the video and create images and post those onto Facebook or on Instagram and drive traffic back. So it's really, once you, once you understand, you know, or the piece of content you want to create, you can repurpose that one thing that you have so many different ways. So you don't need to constantly create content. You just need, need to create good pieces of content and repurpose those all different ways to all the different channels. That is a key piece right there because it is difficult to create a really valuable piece of content. And so rather than 
constantly trying to have lightning strike. Instead, take that really good piece that you've spent all this time on and then spin it off in a bunch of different ways to a bunch of different audiences to really maximize the effect of that. So we have this owned media. We've put it out there. Uh, it'd be nice if people just found it, but we know that that's not the case. What as a small local business can we do to get more eyeballs in front of our video or more readers for our blog or more listeners for our podcast? Um, the, the biggest thing I find is to get the, the owner in on it. Um, that means that they have to buy into this and understand the importance of social media. Um, and then to go out and from what I have found to be super helpful is to either work with ambassadors, local ambassadors that frequent and love this place of business um, and have them share socially. And I'll use an example of a local running store that I consulted with. Um, they have been in business for about four or five years and they brought me in as a consultant because they wanted to get more bang for their buck with the social media they were doing. And I just helped write um, a social media strategic plan for them. And one of the main things I said to them is that they needed a team of ambassadors, of local runners that already love the brand you know, provide them with something, whether that's a free dinner once a year, a free pair of shoes, a t-shirt, and then ask them and ask them to share the blog post, the, the social media post, and also tweet and write about it. And I think that is a wonderful way for your business to, you know, gain some traction locally. Another thing is instead of ambassadors, um, getting together an, a group of local businesses that are in the same area. Maybe you're in the same plaza. Maybe you're in the same mall. Maybe you're on the same street. Maybe there's a shopping street. And work with, together with the other business owners and say, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll share each other's posts or we'll even work together on a piece of content. And then you will get their audience is your audience. So those are two really good strategies, I think. Um, a third one would be to work with local bloggers, specific bloggers, to write about a new product or service that you have um, and get them to write a piece instead of having it be on your blog, have it be on their blog, and so you tap into their audience. All right. So it was the, you use ambassadors. It was also find local businesses, maybe hyper local to you that you might be able to share and promote each other's stuff. And then also find some local bloggers who might be willing to write about you as well. Correct? Yes. yes so those correct. are all good. And those also, uh, many of those will also help with your local search engine visibility as well. Um, so how are you using social media Outside of these three items, how are you using social media to get more visibility for these owned media pieces of content? Because it feels like, you know, five years ago, I posted something to Facebook, all our fans see it. These days, we're basically invisible on Facebook. So how are you overcoming that to get some visibility or, or build an audience for a local business using social? Okay, there is one trick that I use that works really well when you're working with local it is finding pieces of content about local events um, that either are produced by a local photographer, videographer, the local news that highlights something amazing about your community and to reshare that piece of content. Okay, so for example, I'm in Myrtle Beach. We just had Wings Over Myrtle Beach, which was a huge air show. We had the Blue Angels come to Myrtle Beach. Now, everybody was talking about it. And of course, there's some local people that took wonderful videos. Well, for, say, example, a local realtor um, that really has nothing to do with that event, but wants to highlight the beautiful community of Myrtle Beach, I suggest that they go find the video with the most views, go to that video, take the URL of the video, you know, share that on their page, and then when that video, because it's already popular on Facebook, say we're talking about Facebook, it's already popular on Facebook, it will generate a lot of um, probably reactions, likes, comments. It will get shared because if it's already popular, Facebook says, oh, this is a great piece of content. Now, when you do that and people start sharing it or liking it or reacting, those people that react to the piece of content, even if it's not yours, you can invite them to like your page. It also brings up your reach of your page at that time. So it's kind of like a one, two, three punch. You find content like that. 
you post it, you get more reactions, you ask people to like your page, you invite them to, and then the next day when that reaches up, you place your content, your own content on that same page and more people will see it. Okay. So, All right. Definitely a way to get around uh, the Facebook algorithms. Yes. And I try to do that for the local pages that I work with at least once, sometimes twice a week. Find those and videos work really well for that. You can use, you know, search bar in Facebook, um, you know, the, 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 either the community or uh, the topic, the industry, find popular videos, post those, you know, get that engagement up on your page and then boom, the next day post something that's yours and it will reach more people. What are some of the other channels that you're using outside of Facebook that you've had some success with of late in terms of getting uh, shares or traffic to your own owned media? Okay, traffic wise and, and visibility, um, Google Plus, even though as a social channel, it's kind of a dud. Um, it drives tons of traffic. I have one local client who gets seen on Google at least between 500 and 1,000 times. We don't pay for any AdWords or anything, but we have a Google Plus account. I automate it from Buffer. I have a Buffer account. I have um, blogged for them for four years. So we have lots of evergreen content, lots of images, lots of stuff. So every week, every two weeks, I go in and, and make sure that every day something posts using their keywords. So of course, there's going to be a lot of location keywords and industry keywords. I don't try to do too many, but because it goes out, Google sends them lots and lots of traffic and lots of calls they get into their business because they're visible on Google. Google is the second largest search engine. So you're just using Google plus, um, to stay in. And it's really effective if you have some of your own content and when you use keywords that people would be looking for, like what is the best uh, place to eat Chinese food um, in say Myrtle beach, or what is the, um, what is the cheapest way to do X, Y, Z um, in my, in my town. And if you're the one putting the content out, you come up in the search engine. So Google plus um, even though it's not a place where we engage um, it's not a place where we get, um, you know, a lot of people talking to us. We get lots of clicks and we get traffic to our website from Google+. And um, I also think Pinterest is, is underutilized for local businesses. But if you make that content and you create that content, Pinterest um, is a great way to drive traffic to your website as well. All right. Now, do you ever employ offline tactics to increase reach or to bolster your online activity? Um, yes, we have done, uh, we have done some, um, even though I'm a social media marketer, um, I have some local businesses that I, you know, use some PR tactics. And so if I see a story or hear a story, or I talk to a client and I find out they're doing something within a community, I do have connections with the local news stations. So I will send out, um, a quick, um, email or, um, you know, a little press release to them saying, Hey, you know, in, you know, I'm so-and-so Doreen Warren, uh, Van Dam from, you know, my company name. And I have this client that has this wonderful event coming up or they're doing something in the community that is unique, or they have a great story to tell. Would you be interested in this story? And I have gotten several of my clients, um, on TV, you know, you can't pay to be on the 5:30 news, right? I mean, that would be a huge um, amount of money to get an ad on the 5:30 news station. But if you get on there for free and you're wearing your logo chart, that's a great way. So I do feel that sometimes that's a it's a great way that people overlook to get um, some offline PR. You know, getting on the radio or getting on TV, getting some airtime. Um, that's free if you have, you know, if you can dig up the stories that, that your clients have, because everybody has a story. It's just, you know, relating it to something that's going on in the news right now, you know, something that's going on in your hometown. Um, trying to think of, there was an example a couple years ago, um, there was this huge flood. Um, I think it was, maybe it was in the Mississippi area. Um, maybe it was Texas and no, and, and nobody locally in Myrtle beach was really doing fundraising. And 
my client said, you know what, last year Myrtle Beach or County had a huge flood. I want to go uh, collect gift cards and send them down um, to where the flood is. Because when we had a huge flood, people from all over the country send money and help local residents. She was the only one doing it. So I sent that you know, press release out. I um, send it to the media and within an hour, somebody said, we're coming, we're doing a story because we, we agree, you know, only 11 months ago, we were underwater and people were coming and helping us. We want to do a story that you're helping flood victims. And so tying it into, to a, to a news event or something that's happening is a great way to get some PR for a client for a local company. Very good idea. Now, A lot of people will be like, well, this all sounds good, but how do I know if my blog post or my podcast or even my video series is actually what's driving traffic, whether it's foot traffic or website traffic? What's your response to this? How are you measuring the success of any of these organic outreach uh, campaigns? There are different ways to measure. And of course, my clients want to see numbers. So in Google, you can go and Google my business and you can actually, they will give you a report. I can go see how many, there's an analytics in there. I can go see how many times um, this page or this client has been found in Google and it'll say organic, you know, Google showed it to them or they found the blog post and how many calls resulted from that. Actually, you can see if you have a website and you're driving, driving traffic from social to the website, you can dig down pretty far into Google analytics and see where it is coming from. Um, you know, you can go to Pinterest and see how many people are pinning from your website to Pinterest. There's all these different ways, but really what I tell my clients is that it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So you gotta look at the overall um, you know, brand awareness creation um, that is happening. And, you know, I think that when somebody says and walks into your running store and says, you know, I saw something on Facebook, you had an article about, you know, safety for runners. And um, I didn't realize you were right here in Myrtle Beach. You know, I read that blog post right there. That's what I tell my clients to see as their, you know, ROI when people start talking about it. Um, But there are things that we can measure. And, um, you know, brand awareness is just huge. When you're working with brand ambassadors, you can quantitate, you know, you can say, I want you to tweet you know, um, three times a week and, you know, you can measure whether they did or not. And then you can see how many people they reached, you know, you know, how many followers they have. So there's certain things you can measure, um, and other things, you you know, you just have to believe that brand awareness is huge and that eventually your business is going to grow and that your sales are going to go up. And, um, you know, I have one client who has a local store, um, that actually had people walk in and said, my aunt in Australia follows you on Pinterest and then realized that your store was in Myrtle Beach. And so she sent me in to get stuff for her and I'm sending it to Australia. That's how it works. That's when you know things work. Very cool. Uh, yeah. It seems like, you know, despite the fact that we are moving towards a paid solution for so many of these platforms, that there is still room for organic reach as long as you're willing to put in the time and create some valuable content and tell some yeah. good stories. And like you said, treat it like a marathon rather than the sprint. You will find success. Uh, Doreen, this has been great. I'm sure a lot of people want to learn a little bit more about you and your business. Where can we send them? Okay. My business name is more in media. And, um, so more in media.com. Um, once you get to the website and it's all orange, you'll know it's me. Um, on Facebook, I'm more in media, Twitter, Instagram. Um, that's my handle everywhere. And, um, you know, I'd love to connect with you. Awesome. Uh, we'll have those links in the show notes. Doreen, thank you so much for sharing your time and your expertise today. Thank you, Rich, for having me. It was great. For everything that Doreen shared with us, all the links and everything else, just head on over to theagentsofchange.com 252. When you get there, you're going to find a full transcript of our interview along with all the links that Doreen shared, so be sure to check that out. Again, theagentsofchange.com 252. While you're on the website, you can just check out all the information that we have about the four workshops. Uh, for the Agents of Change Digital Marketing Conference that I mentioned uh, before we got started. 
And while you're there, be sure to grab your tickets now before the prices go up. Right now, as I'm recording this, the prices for the tickets are uh, $199 for the physical pass, normally $349, or just $99 for the virtual pass, normally $199. So you can save $150 off your physical pass or $100 off of your virtual pass. Just an amazing deal. Don't wait. Don't pay more than you need to. Head on over to theagentsofchange.com right now. That's all the content we have for this week. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you again in seven. Tune in next week when we continue our battle to subdue search, solve social media, and master mobile marketing.